Imagine a job where you get to work outdoors, take care of animals, protect the environment, and provide a vital and nutritious food source to people. It's an adventure, and farmers like me get to do this every single day. Specifically, I'm a dairy farmer, which means I get to work with these lovely ladies every day to produce nutritious food that's not only good for our bodies, but good for the planet and communities as well. Today, we'll explore the inner workings of dairy farms and talk to some special guests from across the United States. We'll also explore two important topics, sustainability and nutrition, and what it means for a food group to be sustainably nutritious. Welcome to the Farming to the Future virtual field trip, where we'll learn all about dairy and sustainable nutrition. Now, sustainable nutrition may sound complicated, but it's actually a simple concept. It means that food is nutritious, while also produced in a way that contributes to the overall health of the planet, including people and animals. For instance, how do farmers use natural resources, like water and soil, in ways that don't exhaust them, so these resources will still be available in the future? Today, we're gonna visit some friends of mine to learn more about how dairy farmers and dairy foods play an essential role in nourishing people, the planet, and communities. Let's start with my farm, Maple View Dairy. Can you guess where it's located? Here are a few clues. I'm in the Northeastern United States. I'm about 20 minutes from the Canadian border. My town is named after the capital of Spain. And my state shares its name with the largest city in the United States. Have you figured it out? Yes, it's Madrid, New York. Here at Maple View Dairy, we work together with 65 local people who focus on cow care, crop management, and facility maintenance. In addition, we partner with veterinarians and nutritionists to help take the best care of our cows that we can. What I love is that even though everyone has a different skill set, we all work together as a team every day to make sure that the farm runs efficiently and that the cows are well taken care of. We can't talk about dairy and sustainable nutrition without introducing the true stars of the show, our dairy cows. These ladies, as I like to call them, are truly remarkable animals who help us conserve resources in their own unique way. Did you know, for instance, that cows love to eat parts of the plants that people can't eat, like almond holes or citrus pulp? This helps keep food waste out of landfills, and I think that's pretty cool. It's important to make sure we are taking good care of our cows. As the saying goes, a healthy cow is a happy cow. On our farm, we grow about 5,000 acres of crops that are all dedicated to feed our cows. These ladies eat a lot of food. Did you know that each one of our cows eats about 125 pounds of food every day? You and I only eat between two to five pounds of food in a day. But enough about these magical animals for now. Let's spend some time talking a little bit more about our bodies and how dairy can play an important role. Even though we eat much less than cows, it's really important that we humans not only get a balanced and nutritional diet, but also maintain a healthy lifestyle. Our first guest is a dietitian with a super fun job. 
My friend Leslie works with professional sports leagues and even with the fastest man in the world. Luckily, she also works with people and kids just like you and me on good nutrition and making sure we're paying attention to our health. It's time to guess where Leslie is located. Here are a few hints. The state is known as the Keystone State because of its unique shape. The city has three rivers that run through it and has more than 400 bridges, more than even Venice, Italy. Can you guess where she's located? If you guess Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, then you're correct. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Kelsey. It's great to talk with you today. I'm surprised to learn how much a cow eats each day. Just like cows need to eat a nutritious diet to make milk, we need to eat a nutritious diet to help us live healthy lives. I am a sports dietitian, so that means that I have a background as a registered dietitian and I have a specialty in sports nutrition. I am so very lucky that I get to work with professional athletes and talk to them about how what they eat can help them fuel their bodies to optimize their performance each and every day. It's important to eat a well-balanced diet to make sure that just like these athletes, you can perform well too. And that might mean your wellness goals or your health goals, or maybe you want to be stronger, or maybe you want to be faster, or maybe you want to have more energy, or you want to focus better in the classroom. So no matter your goal, making sure that our bodies are well nourished, that is part of the solution. Nutritious foods fuel our bodies. Let's learn about some of the nutrients in dairy foods. Did you know that each eight ounce glass of milk delivers nine essential nutrients? In fact, it contains three of the four critical nutrients most often lacking in most Americans' diets, including calcium, vitamin D, and potassium. But in addition to that, when you have an eight ounce glass of milk, you are getting eight grams of protein. So you are providing your body with the nutrients that it needs to help to support your muscles, to help to support healthy bones. Now, I'd like to share a few simple steps to help you make sure that you are getting the most out of your food. First, pay attention to the time you eat. It's important to eat regular meals and snacks that contain a variety of food groups, including dairy. Having a source of protein at meals and snacks is important too. Second, pay attention to what you drink. Water and milk is a great way to hydrate your body because your brain needs to be hydrated 24 hours a day. Your body needs to be hydrated 24 hours a day. If you don't drink enough, you are going to be weaker, you are going to be slower, and you are going to tire more quickly. And you may not be able to think in the classroom, so that's not a good thing. Third, it's important to create a great plate. And a great plate is a plate that has about a palm-sized amount of protein on it, two-fifths worth of fruit and vegetables on the plate, and contains at least a fifth or maybe even two-fifths of carbohydrate-containing foods. Last, it's important to get enough sleep. Sleep gives your body time to heal, restore, relax, and recover. So getting enough sleep is as important as what you do physically during the day to help your body be the best that it can be. So don't forget to get those Zs. In addition to eating well, our bodies also need to keep active and exercise. When you move your body, it creates an increased blood flow to your brain so you can be more engaged in what's going on around you. Exercise gets your heart pumping, your lungs moving oxygen, and it also gets our digestive system moving. Exercising helps to keep you healthier. And when people become more aware of what they're eating and how they're moving, we create a healthier community. You can help your community become healthier by sharing some of the tips I just shared with you with your family and your friends. Thanks, Leslie. You inspired me to get my body moving and there is plenty of work here to do on the farm. 
I'm going to pay even more attention to what and how I'm eating. So while Leslie explained the nutrition piece of sustainable nutrition, we can't forget the other key word, sustainable. This is especially important today in light of climate change and other issues facing the environment. The good news is that dairy farmers are committed to helping the environment. In fact, in 2020, the U.S. dairy industry set important new environmental sustainability goals that we intend to meet by the year 2050. These goals include improving water usage and quality, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and becoming carbon neutral or better. We are focused on addressing the areas where the dairy industry can have the greatest impact. This includes production of cow feed, taking care of cows, energy efficiency, and even manure management. That's right, managing how we deal with cow poop. One of my favorite ways we're already practicing sustainability on our farm is by recycling cow manure and turning it into bedding for our cows. This may sound surprising, but I promise it's not. We use a separator that squishes all the liquid out of the manure, leaving behind a dry, fluffy substance that's the non-digested components of cow feed corn, grass, and other plant materials. Once we have this material, we make sure to add hydrated lime to it to ensure that there is no bacteria that grows in the bedding. We want our bedding to stay super clean. It's time to meet our next guest. My friend Tara is an environmental scientist and a fifth generation dairy farmer. Let's see if you can guess where her farm is. It's located out west in a sparsely populated state with just an average of 17 people per square mile. More sheep and cows live here than people. The capital of the state, Santa Fe, is the oldest state capital in the US. Can you guess where her farm is? Yes, it's Clovis, New Mexico. Hi, Tara. Hi, Kelsey. It's so great to talk with you. Isn't it cool to see all the amazing things that we're doing with manure? As an environmental scientist, one of my specialties is helping other dairy farmers with their own manure management. I also get to help dairy farmers across the country with water conservation and sustainable farming practices. Here in New Mexico, we have some unique considerations when it comes to taking care of our farm and our land. The soil here is very sandy, which means it's low in organic matter. At our dairy, we actually have an active sand dune. But one of the things we can do to improve our soil organic matter and improve the overall health of our soil is add cow manure to it. And the cow manure really builds that organic matter in the soil and help the soil have better water holding capacity. You want to have lots of living things in your soil to help your plants grow strong and those plants are ultimately going to feed our cows. Another thing that we need to be mindful of here is how much water we're using. Here in New Mexico we have a lot of beautiful sunshiny days which our cows love, but we don't have a lot of water. Water is one of our most precious natural resources, so we try to conserve water as much as we can. We used one gallon of water on our farm up to five times. The first time we use that gallon of water is going to be to cool the milk. Groundwater is at about 55 degrees, whereas milk is at over 100 degrees. So we use the water to cool the milk, and then we store that water in a holding tank where it's used to clean the front of our barn. Then we use that same water to flush out the back of our barn and our alleyways where our cows walk then all of that water is going to be collected in our lagoon where it passes through a separator and we separate the solids from the liquids with the liquids being stored in the lagoon. And that same lagoon also collects our rainwater and all of that water together is ultimately applied out onto our fields to water our crops through a sprinkler system. Four times a year I collect a sample from our lagoon and the way that I do this and collect all these samples is I take plastic bottles 
filled them up with the different types of liquids that I'm collecting, and then I ultimately put them in a big ice chest, packed them in with lots of ice, and shipped them off to our lab to be sampled. The lab analyzes those samples and sends me a report back. I use that report to look at exactly what kind of nutrients are in our lagoon water because we want to make sure that we have the right balance of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in our soils to make sure our plants grow strong. Another cool way we're considering stretching our water supply is with worms. I know it sounds kind of crazy and a little slimy, but dairy farmers are adding worms and worm casings to their soil and it increases the soil health. It increases the soil's ability to hold water. Worm castings are also known as vermicast or worm poo. It's great at making the soil more absorbent and creates a healthier soil by providing key minerals and nutrients and it even helps keep pests away. There's currently a major water crisis happening around the world. It's one of the biggest risk factors facing our planet. Even though 71% of our planet is covered with water, only 3% of it is fresh water. In other words, suitable for us to drink. Everyone can help conserve water since water is a limited resource around the globe. At home, you can turn off the faucet while you're brushing your teeth and you can even try taking shorter showers. What other ideas do you have for reducing water use? I think you're starting to see that farms are great places to practice the three R's. Reduce, recycle, reuse. Protecting natural resources is one of my passions, and I'm so happy I got to share with you today about how our farm is practicing sustainability. Tara is right. We're all about reusing things on the farm. Hopefully, each of you are thinking about practices you can start in your own homes and schools to help protect our planet, too. Do you ever wonder where your food comes from? Did you know that most of the food you eat is first grown or produced on a farm? While there are many different kinds of farms and they produce different types of food, we all serve the same purpose. And that is to provide food to nourish our communities. The world's population is expected to grow by 2.2 billion people by 2050. How do we continue to feed this growing population? Already, there are many people who do not have access to nutritious food today, even here in the United States. In fact, some people have to travel a great distance to get their groceries. We call these areas food deserts. Together, farmers work with their communities to find ways to bring nutritious food directly to your table to make sure everyone is fed. We call this the Farm to Table Movement. It's time to meet our final guest. My friend Carla is an American chef and TV personality who's appeared on shows like Top Chef and The Chew. She has an impressive resume and a passion for giving back to others. Let's see if you can guess where she's located. It's technically not a state, it's known for having a large white house, and it shares its name with our first president. If you guess our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., you're right. Hey, Kelsey. I am so excited to talk about food and how it really connects us all. Food has always been an important part of my life. And while I love to cook, I also like to work on projects that help increase people's access to wholesome food options. Food insecurity happens when people don't have access to good food. They don't have either enough money to pay for that food or they don't have access to grocery stores. So they may depend on a small corner store for their main source of food. And in those corner stores, there may not be real food like meat and milk and vegetables. It's fresh food that will sustain you. And that is in food deserts. When you go out in your neighborhood and you have to travel so far to find a grocery store with fresh produce, even though I could leave my door right now and within a five minute walk, I could be in three different grocery stores. Everybody doesn't have that. 
So you all are probably wondering, what can you do as kids in your community? You can start a pantry in your school, do a food drive and collect food. Other things you can do with your parents is to shop for older people, especially older people who are shut in and they are pretty much bound to their apartments or their homes. Maybe get a list and find a way to go and shop for them to bring the food back to your neighbor. I would be interested in seeing what you all think, but these are just a few ideas to sort of get you thinking about what you would do and how you can help other people. A lot of times people talk about the farm to table movement and then it becomes these buzzwords, but really the farm to table movement is really important because it connects us to where our food comes from. And when you don't have a connection to your food, it's very easy to take that for granted and also not to understand the work that goes into it. Somebody did the work to put it here. And so I think that the farm to table movement is acknowledging one, the seasonality of food. You can't get strawberries all the time. If you all go to the farmer's market in June, and you see berries and you'll see some tomatoes. And then in July, you'll see watermelon and corn. And when you think about the seasonality of food and in taking all of that into consideration, like farm to table, it's eating in season so that you have the best and the most delicious produce. Another thing about the farm to table movement is to honor the people who actually helped produce this food. There is a fisherman who caught that fish. There is somebody who had a ranch and they brought you beef and pork and then there's chickens and then there's the farmer who brings you the produce and then there's the dairy farmer. And think about where you get your milk from. Where does your cheese come from? All of that, where does your heavy cream come from that you're gonna put on your ice cream? What? All of that. The farm to table movement encompasses all of these people. One of the things that I love about cooking is that it not only feeds our bellies, it feeds our soul, and it's how I express love. So one of my favorite recipes that I have had since I was a kid, my grandmother made it, my mother made it, my dad made it, uh, made it and I make it for so many people, is hot chocolate. I mean, what kid, young or old, doesn't like hot chocolate. So I'm gonna teach you how to make my hot chocolate mix and you'll be able to tailor it however you want and just let your creativity fly. So I'm hoping that you are going to take this recipe and make it your own and see how delicious your creativity is. So enjoy and have fun. Thank you so much for sharing, Carla. I love seeing how chefs are using dairy in their recipes. I've had a great time talking with you all today, and I hope you've enjoyed hearing all these innovative solutions to help keep our farms sustainable and providing nutritious food for generations to come. I'll leave you with one last fun fact. Between 2007 and 2017, the environmental impact of producing one gallon of milk significantly decreased. It now requires 30% less water, 21% less land, and has a 19% smaller carbon footprint. But there's still more work to be done, and we're determined to do more. I want to say a huge thank you to Leslie, Tara, and Carla for talking to us today about their work and helping connect the farm to the food on our plate, its impact on the environment, and how we can help our communities. I know we're all up for the challenge and can work together to make the world a better, more sustainable place. If you want to learn more about Dairy's sustainable nutrition story, be sure to check out discoverundeniablydairy.com.